Hello everyone. It's the Reses under Rock and today maybe what's transpiring? Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, there's the Reses under Rock and today we're gonna start playing Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Now uh, this game though, compared to MGS2. I've played multiple times when it came out, like a lot. I mean, I was a hardcore gamer at the time, so I could not go past normal. I was too scared. Because, uh, not necessarily the hardest one, but uh, it has a completely like, If this one kind of changes things up a bit when it comes to gameplay. Okay. There's a lot of thing. movement speeds. Yep. Long and running. So crawling. You already know that one. First person view, also R1. Okay. Also attack in square. First frame of the square button, okay. Matches on trees. You can climb trees. Aiming. Certain weapon, okay. For certain weapons, you can aim with L1 button. Well, there's first person and then there's, you know, aiming. Okay. And overhead view. Swimming. Building attack. No, I know that one. Choosing view. Now we're going to small spaces. Objects and ladders. Yep. Same thing. Can't come close. When there's a railing, face the edge and press triangle, jump over it and hang down. When there's no railing, the edge face the long drop might result in injury. Well, actually, you hang down when walking over the edge. It's not a long drop, then you only hang down if you approach the edge, walking or stopping. Use the left stick to move along the edge. 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 Pull up and peek over the edge. Engage. The next left go and drop down. Quick change. Press L2 or R2 to unequip and re the correct weapon or item. So yeah, we, it's no longer the L1 or R1. It's the L2 and R2 now. Sorry, take a moment. Just uh, take a moment to listen.
Sorry about that. I'm back. Yeah, you can just knock out people like that, but... Well, there are pros and cons to everything. Killing enemies, knocking out enemies, putting enemies to sleep, for holding them up. Now, for killing enemies, pros and cons. Um, Uh, if an enemy is killed, it's kind of kind of semi -per semi permanent that they won't uh, respawn. I, the reason I say semi permanent because uh, if the enemy discovers their corpse, there's possibility that that soldier will be replaced. But I'm not sure if that applies to this game. And of course, um. Uh, if you care about ranks, then it will also affect the rank. Knocking out enemies. Uh, yeah, you need to be close. But uh, in this case, uh, you won't have to worry about using up ammo. But if the enemy at some point wakes up, they will alert their comrades, and you'll be in uh, caution. You'll be in caution mode. They put them to sleep. But of course, uh, they'll end up sleeping. They won't alert. Oh, they won't alert if they uh, if they wake up. They won't be alerted. Or going to caution. And then there's also holding up. Uh, if, it, if it's hold up, there's a risk that they might resist. If your you know if your reflexes are slow. They could turn tables on you and alert the uh, alert his comrades anyway. But uh, if you do manage to uh, hold them up, they will stay in that state unless a uh, comrade sees them and you know interacts with them or something. And then you go to a caution mode. So the idea is. No, uh, they will stay in. Well, sorry, they will stay in a hold-up state unless uh, a, a com, uh, an alloy of theirs uh, interacts with them. Then they'll go into caution mode, or you get found out by another uh, soldier, which would put the entire thing on caution mode, and they'll and whoever got uh, held up would become lost. Awesome. So yeah. Circle? Okay, circle. Left stick. So left stick and circle button when you're in soldier. And throw them down. Choke hold. Okay, this is gonna get taken use because uh, it's a circle, not square anymore. But you need a CQC ready weapon, okay. But what about this one? You also need a CQC ready weapon. So you cannot be uh, you cannot be barehanded. You need to at least have a knife. Same thing. Hold down the L3 while holding an enemy soldier in a chokehold to defend them with a knife. Slip throw. Um yeah, but I thought there were no pressure pressure button things here on the PS3. So I'm not really sure how that works out. So a hold them. Holding them in a circle, and you can also do that. When when they're when they're in this state, they have uh, they're not they cannot uh, retaliate or anything like that. 
So it's better to just grab a hold of them, put them down, then hold them up. They'll be like that. And then the enemy soldier after throwing, you can hold them up. Thank you, finally. Lower the position, the less your hands uh, tremble. Finally, better than standing and lying down is better than either position. Corner jump out to you. Nineteenth first person. And we're just speaking. Oh, okay. Hang shots. Drag. Oh, that's confusing. The fact you can you can drag in with square, but you have to but you need to grab them while they're awake with a circle. While you're holding the body, you can drag it along with you. Then you have weapons. Okay. Making noise. Let's strike the wall up against the wall and knock it. Check them. You can occasionally make your way around them. Never pick all void in town by. Right stick. This part of shooting destroy radios, the enemy soldiers are holding. If their radio is destroyed, the soldier will have without any way to call them back. Okay. So, yeah. So. Playing this, we have actually four goals. Last time I said three, we actually have four goals. Goal number one, the most important one, no alerts. Meaning every time we go on alert, we start over from our previous save. If we saved at all. This, uh, for this reason, uh, that way we can get the stealth camo on the, la in the ladder, uh, ladder, Playthroughs. Check number two. Uh, we need to get the mark or the mark or mark or rank. Mark or rank means we need to collect all food items at least once. We don't need to eat them. We just need them in our inventory at least once and do whatever we want. But it's better to just eat them so that we can track them. Number three, get as many, get as many, well, as much camel uniform as we can. That means defeating bosses non-lethally. And lastly, number four, uh, this also kind of works out along with the Marco rank. Uh, we need to find the Suchinoko. The Suchinoko is a, uh, well, it's a food item, but we need to keep it in our, once we have it, we need to keep it in our inventory by the time we finish the game. And we need to have it, we need to have that Suchinoko alive, not dead. So, yeah. Special. Uh, what are the advantages of MGS saying MGS3? Hmm. 
Hmm, give him a moment. Um, Apparently hmm. there's extra camel on playing talking MGS3. What if I choose others? Would I still be able to unlock the thing? Hmm. 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 You know, it's a lot of players already doing that. I like MGS2, so. The only thing is that, um, special cutscenes, not only special, but, uh, huh, huh, huh. Just, and just one, it's not, there's not really much of a benefit. At least, um, the only thing is that it decreased the amount of... Uh, it de your stamina gauge slow, uh, depletes slower compared to these two. In MGS2, there's a cutscene where in... Yeah, just a, a cutscene. In MGS3, you get uh, special camels. Hmm. Well, fine. Just do. We'll just do the cutscene thing. Normal. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two: East, East and West. West. This marks the beginning of the era of the Cold, Cold War. War. Flying over Pakistan, altitude 30,000 feet. Oh, Approaching really? Soviet airspace. Um, wait. 20 minutes to drop off. Not five. Not five. Seven. Okay. No, it's too small. All right. You ready to go? Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Still too big. Make it thirty. I don't know twenty. Put out that cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior oh, connector. No. Put on your mask. I'm already wearing it. 
I, I mean, uh, uh, sure, sure. Uh, let me finish my cigars. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the off. Move to the rear. Activate the alarm bottle. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. Ten seconds to drop off. Stand by. This halo meaning in high altitude. Status okay. All I can't remember. Prepare for drop off. Uh-oh. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Low opening. I don't know what low opening means. With high altitude, you come from high up. Low opening, you low, you open your parachute at a low altitude. I'm not sure. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission. Virtual mission. No, the virtuous mission. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission. Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well, about two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. Stepanovich. of the OKB754 OK Design Bureau one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov, isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development to become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. He used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. Mm. But the security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. Okay, that makes sense. It was only a week and he wasn't a soldier. We something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962. 
President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles on Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. Uh, but but in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the U.S. agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? So cool. so cool. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handed him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my sight. Oh, it's kind of harsh. You thought you're safe, meeting your family, and then nope, you're stabbed in the back. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No, missile. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi-palatins. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. Mm. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. <laughs> Is that really the reason? Just recently. Why? <laughs> the reason why they Probably call it the virtuous mission? a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. They must be high altitude here. High altitude low opening. Follow what I mean. Maybe? I don't know, I'm not really sure. Listen up, Jack. Your mission is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Jack. Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov, and bring him back to the west. If we don't get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, We'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. Nope. Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by the recovery the first point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that oh. point. Helium will be Pops. pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the Wait, balloon. If this is supposed to be a secret mission, and you have a like, parachute with the logo Fox on it. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Which is a special ops. It was just a special ops unit for the United States. 
The shotgun Isn't that a huge giveaway? A parachute jump and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20 millimeter. I mean, this the type of parachute that's for millimeter. some reason burning up. Sounds like she could hold her own against the battalion. Which I don't think that's the case. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. That can't be good for any. Now oh, this makes the game more, a whole lot easier compared to the original. Yeah, actually look around. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? But you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call 1909. Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. Oh, and Snake? Yeah. The crew isn't watching anymore. You can take off the disguise now. Good idea. This isn't right. Time for the snake to shed his skin. Some would say that the mask is like a, a middle finger to people who hated Raiden in MGS2. But then again, why would you choose I like MGS2 if you hated the if you hated the game, right? So you wouldn't get this cutscene. So it's not really a middle. What? It's not. A, it's not like a middle finger to the people who hate MGS2. It's kind of like uh, just getting F you to the fans of MGS2. <laughs> Can you hear me, Major Tom? This is Snake. Kept you waiting, huh? This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox Unit's speciality. Speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. OSP, not POS. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. That's yeah, probably why I was POS. You later when the time is right. He said gotcha. procure it on site. Getting back it's supposed to be OS2, which is on site procurement. I'm supposed to be myself. You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. 
You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. Well, we're gonna get it. Go well, you better go back and get it then. So you know what I did? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. I know. I should have done, should have kind of just checked this earlier. Yeah. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once yeah, its durability reaches zero, disposable. the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. 
Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and U.S. government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. Oh, no. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So, how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing yeah, but if you're in you false back. death state where you're Remember unconscious, that. how can you I'll take out the mind. pill from your teeth? You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane It's not if they're dead or alive. Funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. He's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You really count it. Lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. Oh, that's in true. fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. 
I already told you, Jack. I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Soldiers it's kind of sad. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Thanks, Where boss. boss. Next to the major. The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your gotcha. mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. All right. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Commencing virtuous mission now. Well, do that though. <laughs> now I'm just gonna call. I'm gonna put it back on. Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. To use camouflage, first press the start button to go to the survival viewer. Then select camouflage and press the enter button. Select uniform to select battle fatigues and face to select face paint. 
Choose battle fatigues that match the surrounding environment. Well, in this game's a little more detailed than the first one. Camouflage or stealth. Fatigues that blend in with the environment. Camouflage patterns that stand out in your surroundings will attract attention. Visibility is poor in the jungle, so you'll be finding yourself in a lot of unexpected encounters. Naturally, this means that close quarters combat will be more important than ever. So I'll have plenty of chances to use CQC then. That's right. In proximity encounters, firing a gun isn't necessarily the best response to every situation. It's only one option among many. Rather than taking the time to draw, aim, and fire a gun, engaging your opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat can sometimes be a faster and more reliable way of subduing him. Besides, in a sneaking mission like this one, it's too dangerous to go around firing your gun. You'll end up revealing yourself to the enemy. Yeah, I know. You created CQC to deal with exactly this type of situation. With your help, of course. In a battle situation, you'll only have a split second to decide how to attack. Use the weapon button to attack using a weapon, and the CQC button to attack using CQC. Press the CQC button once to throw a punch. Pressing it multiple times in succession will allow you to deliver a combo attack. But striking your opponent is just one aspect of CQC. It doesn't really start to shine until you've got your enemy in a hold. Press and hold down the CQC button to grab your opponent with your right hand. From there, you can use the left stick to knock your opponent off balance and throw him to the ground. This can be used to knock an opponent out in a single blow. If you don't press the left stick, grapple with your enemy until you're behind them and can get your knife to their throat. Grabbing an enemy from behind and holding your knife against his throat will render him virtually powerless. From this point, there are several things you can do. Press the CQC button hard to slit the enemy's throat with your knife. Move the left stick and press the CQC button to throw the enemy to the ground. Lightly tap the CQC button rapidly to choke the enemy. You can use this to knock him out or even kill him if you do it long enough. By continuing to hold down the CQC button, you can move around while keeping your grip on the enemy. By pressing the weapon button, you can aim your currently equipped weapon at another enemy. With their comrade acting as a human shield, the enemy will be reluctant to attack you. Press the left stick to press your knife against the enemy and demand information. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn this way. But don't get too complacent. While your enemy may be powerless in your grip, he'll use any opportunity he can to counterattack. All right. You're gonna, you're gonna tell me. You can only use seek. Sorry. Snake, yes. did you take off your uniform? Yeah. yeah. What's the matter? Just needed to loosen up. <sighs> I know there's a naked option under <laughs> uniform in the camouflage window that lets you take off your uniform. But without a uniform on, your camo index will remain low, and you'll burn through your stamina more quickly. So stop acting like a fool and put some camouflage on now! Did you hear me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the gauge below your life gauge is your stamina gauge. It shows, as the name suggests, your remaining stamina. As you consume stamina, your natural life regeneration is slowed. That area is home to the reticulated python. The reticulated python is said to be the largest snake in the world. The biggest ones can grow up to 10 meters in length. Although they're not poisonous, they're still very dangerous, so be careful around them. They have a highly ferocious temperament, and they can swallow whole, even large animals like deer and pigs. Their most distinguishing feature is the mesh pattern of their scales. This pattern acts as a highly effective natural camouflage. If you think there might be a reticulated python about, pay close attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, you could get bitten before you even know it's there. But you should be able to capture it alive by using the tranquilizer gun. I'll bet if you capture one and throw it at an enemy, it'll give him a good scare. Right. But how do they taste? 
Huh? Do they taste good? <laughs> You're actually going to eat one. Why else would I be asking? Cannibal. What was that? Oh, what was that? Let's see what the guide says. Ah, you're in luck. It says they taste pretty good. Good. I can hardly wait. Oh. Oh. Snake, that area is inhabited by the giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They say it even eats crocodiles. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. The giant anaconda is a very large snake, but you should be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going to ask me that. Glad I didn't disappoint you. So? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Oh. Snake, that area is inhabited by magpies. magpies. Magpies are members of the Birds. crow family. They're distinguishable by their beautiful dark blue and white bodies and their long tails. Their favorite food is insects, but they'll also eat small fish, acorns, and fruit. They're omnivores, which means... They'll eat anything. Right, just like you, huh? If you use the tranquilizer gun, you should be able to capture magpies alive. Okay, so how do they taste? You always ask me that. Naturally. So? I've never heard of anybody actually eating a magpie, but I suppose there's no reason you couldn't. You don't say. You don't say. Eat food to recover stamina. Capture plants and animals to get food. I have information on the local plants and animals, so don't hesitate to ask. Okay. Snake, that area tree should frogs. be inhabited by tree frogs. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, well, spending it's most of its time in shrubs and bushes. Use the tranquilizer gun to catch one alive. I bet you could scare an enemy good if you toss one at him. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously, that is one theory. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Do you think they're safe to eat? Is that all you ever think about? Well, that's all I ever eat. Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. If it is the waste that's causing it, then it means humans are interfering with the ecosystem. It really makes you think about the changing relationship between... This isn't interesting. Oh, be that way. So, how about it? You mean, is it edible? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess it's probably okay. Probably. I don't know. The guide doesn't say anything. Pretty useless guide, if you ask me. Well, try one for dinner and you can help improve it. I see you have a calorie mate. Calorie mate? The thing you're holding now? Oh, the little block that looks like a cookie? Try it, it's pretty good. Okay. But what is this thing? Never seen anything like it. Calorie Made is an energy supplement that contains all the proteins, lipids, vitamins, carbohydrates, and minerals needed for a balanced diet. It's a well-balanced food. Because of that, it's just perfect for giving your body the nutrition it needs in combat. It sounds like a space-age food. One hour, we'll raise one hour in. Good, but that should taste fine. Yeah, and it'll help balance out all this jungle food I'm eating. It's easy and quick to eat, so it's perfect when you're running late for an important mission in the morning. I've never been late for a mission. Really? Aren't you always keeping people waiting? What do you mean? It's easy to keep track of your calorie intake and receive the nutrition your body needs, so it's good for losing weight, too. All of the geisha girls in Japan use it for watching their calories. Is that why they're all so slim? Right. And any diet where you eat nothing at all is bad for the body. I see. You seem to know a lot about Japan, don't you? Yes, I love Japan. Nice. You should be able to find Russian oyster mushrooms in that area. 
The Russian oyster mushroom is an edible variety that belongs to the Shimeji family. It's known to be particularly rich in vitamin B1 and niacin. Apparently, it's usually found growing on tree stumps and hollow logs. So look there if you want to eat some. Okay, okay, okay. Well, boss told us. And so we have to. Well, I'm gonna... And da, 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 da. We're, we're safe here for now, so we don't need the tranquilizer just yet. Snake. Snake H. Totally see you. Particularly Python. Snake H. That's uh, the next there. Oh, it's so much better. Actually, look around. Mushroom A. Russian oyster mushroom. Another snake each. Supposedly there's an anaconda here, so is this another thing? It's another Russian oyster. Yeah, it's going to be um, kind of difficult time for magpies. Hard to see. Mess that up. <laughs> Will they reappear there? Mango. The bridge are back. And to be on the safe side, I think it's better you use the directional button for sneaking. Mm. 
Yeah, that's Cancy. Here, from. Maybe. Now, even if I shoot it, would I be able to get to it in time before it despawns? I don't think so. So. I see you found a Russian false mango. The Russian false mango is a mango-like fruit found only in Selinoyarsk. The egg-shaped fruit is sweet and tangy with a pleasing aroma, just like a mango. Also, the seeds can be used to make a medicine that aids in digestion. It might come in handy if you ever have an upset stomach. Okay, let me try. See it. Better hurry, better, better, better. Pretty spawns, pretty spawns. Right, my one. Okay, bird D. Should be magpie. Can I keep it? Oh. Wait, tree frog. I haven't found tree frog yet. It's supposed to be big. I think it's supposed to be on the floor. And you did say tree frog, but I remember finding them on the floor. Let me just look around. Where oh. is that, right? Where's that frog? I'll get you. I'll get you. Somewhere. You're somewhere here. There. Actually. No. Tree frog. Just tree frog. No, there's no list. I'll spare you, have to find out who.
Where you got the magpie, got the frog. Got... Supposedly there's a giant anaconda? Is there one hanging around somewhere? Snake, come on. It's just... Oh my god. Snake. I don't see anything hanging around. And I think there's only... Uh, some more of those... false bangles. Just be sure. Ooh, big. That's the boss mango. And this is another reticulated plant, huh? so I'm leave it alone. Yeah, no pop, no anaconda. No, no, no. All right. Well, I know there's some other area we can find the next on this. Saving the game, Snake? Yep. I'll be saving life in this way, bro. Hey, Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? No. What is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster called Godzilla, who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. <laughs> Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile, Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies, then? Of course. Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. I should have to pay Crocs.
I see you've captured an Indian gavial. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So, how do they... Taste? Yes, I did look into that. You know what they always say. Tastes like chicken. It sounds delicious. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures, but the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. Hmm, not doesn't seem to be very violent to me. It's not any other fruits. Oh, over there. Can't see pressure. Ooh. They don't really chase you unless you're in water, so it's fine. Oh. Do we need to want that mess? Disgusting. How snake are you? Another articulated. Take C. Golova. I don't have a like a special checklist. I only have it on old uh, an old pad. Uh, 